Admiral's log, September 2nd, 1916. We're in a tough spot. Fighting Germany, Japan, and Austria-Hungary all at once is stretching us thin. Our Navy's doing everything it can, but we're feeling the pinch. There's only so much our ships and sailors can handle, and the budget's tighter than ever. Running battles on three fronts isn't just hard. It's near impossible to keep up without something giving way. We're pushing our shipyards to the limit, and our sailors are out there fighting non-stop. We need more ships, more gear, but the money's running out. We can't keep this up forever. One of these fights needs to end, and soon. If we don't find a way to wind down at least one war, we're going to hit a wall. It's not just about fighting harder. We need to fight smarter. I'm looking at our options. Maybe we can get a win somewhere. Or maybe there's a chance for peace talks. We need to think about how to use our strength where it counts the most. The next few months are going to be key. We've got to make some smart moves and maybe get a bit lucky. But I know our folks are tough, and we'll do what it takes to get through this. We just need to focus on getting one step ahead, one battle at a time. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Episode 20, um, as you might hear by my voice, I'm a little under the weather. And hopefully my voice is not going to give out midway through the video. Today we're doing a bit of a coastal defense around the southern Finland area. We are using the battle cruiser Kuban. New battle cruiser. This is her first operation. She's carrying eight 13-inch guns. And we're about to find out if that's enough to defend a couple transports from Graf Spey. Now, I have 13-inch guns. I have eight of them. They too have 13 inch, sorry, they have 12 inch guns, but more of them. Um, these things are quick, 29 knots. Mine are doing 26 knots. I am um, going to be very capable of intercepting the heavy cruiser, the CLs, the DD. I'm not that scared of that. The Graf Spey, this is potentially a lethal weapon out there. Fortunately, we have Europa. It is only a 1913 version of the ship, so she's slightly older, but she too carries 13-inch guns. And more importantly, as a veteran crew. She's seen most of the conflict in uh, the Black Sea. She has done a lot of work there. And as she was repairing in Gibraltar, the alliance with the British got cancelled, leading to the Europa getting uh, immediately beamed over to, I think, one of the Finnish ports to complete her repairs and refits. It's a bit of a weird system, but that's why Europa is suddenly no longer in the Black Sea, but all the way out here. Now here she is, Kuban, named after, well, Kuban. Light cruiser, um, the very trustworthy ally most of the time of Europa. So having these two ships back together, I think, is quite fitting. Unless I'm completely mistaken, but I believe that these two guys uh, used to work together. Now, they have a bit of an odd design. I mean, it's an, an APXY, but they also have a two-inch um, hat, if you will, sitting atop the B and the X turrets. Beyond that, they have a couple of four-inchers and some eight-inchers. Uh, these things are designed to punch hard and then run off. Although, well, at 26 and a half knots, running off is not necessarily something they'll do very, very well. Surprisingly, the German battlecruiser over here already has low fuel. Either this thing has no range, or it's been out here for a while. It seems to have a pretty low draft. That could make her very vulnerable to flooding. That would be very interesting to abuse. Unfortunately, it's not something I can directly influence. Uh, I mean, I can, yeah, I can use HE at shorter ranges and hope that I can pin that armor. But beyond that, I don't really... Yeah, well, maybe torpedoes. Uh, Light Cruiser Abrak only has 7-inch guns. And then we have the uh, Kapitan Jurosovsky. This guy, of course, carries torpedoes, but has to get real close. The Europa herself also carries torpedo launchers, but, well... I really am not appreciate getting close to a threat like that. Because 10 inches can hurt. What is their range? 26 clicks. Damn. That's mine. 27. They got some pretty good guns out there. These guns only have a range of 25. 
Now, I really appreciate the Germans sending a ship out here, because the Germans are still working on an invasion. And my plan is to kick the German Navy's ass as hard as possible. And then immediately, once they sue for peace, accept it. I don't really want a prolonged war with the Germans. It's not going to be something that is going to go very well, because I don't have a whole lot of assets here. Well, I mean, at this point... Ooh. Juicy, juicy hit. At this point, yes, I have the Europa and the Kuban, and they're both ready to fight. So... Maybe I can do some damage against the German economy. But whether that actually matters in the, the strategic scale, I still find very hard to determine. Sometimes you can see that the enemy is losing tons of tons of transports, and then you go, hold on, but why is your economy growing then? Why are you not suffering economically from the loss of all of those transports? That's kind of the weird thing about this whole game. Now, we do need to get rid of this DD, because soon they will be in torpedo range. Not as of yet. That battle cruiser is going down. Holy shit, like now. That was a short fight for Graf Spey. Trained crew. Pricey ship. 192 mil. Armor, pretty good. 105%. Overall... Yeah, main belt, four belts, um, yeah, armor's pretty good. Superstructure is a bit of a weak spot, but beyond that, decent design, I'd say. <clears throat> Unfortunately, she's going to be parked off the coast of Finland for the foreseeable future. Now, let's see if we can eliminate the whole group, because that would give me quite a lot of victory points. A battle that I did not show, which was because it was a bit of a slaughter, was against the Japanese. Um, that battle yielded me 42,000 victory points. I didn't lose a single ship, and the Japanese lost a battle cruiser in a battleship. And immediately thought, well, maybe this wasn't our best deal. Maybe this was not our best decision. Uh, decided to sue for peace, and I said, nope, we're going to continue this little play thing of ours. So I'm still at war with Japan. And with some of the other area, or some of the other factions in the area. So by no means are we done with our wars, but I do hope to put this one down pretty quick. Because one thing my <laughs> little campaign doesn't do very well is land operations. The army logistics is so bad that the moment that I get invaded, even if I got a 3 to 1 defender advantage, I am still likely to get completely wiped off the map. It's a frustrating bit, but it's something that you just have to keep in mind. Now Europa... That veteran crew. 8.2k damage. Uh, Kuban did the other four. And I completely forgot about the CL. <laughs> the DD still around here. But doesn't really have the range to engage. Which is fine. The DD just wants to stay close. That's perfectly fine. This battle also on low fuel? Where's my fuel? 96%. 95. Excellent. So we're we're very good on fuel. Heavy cruiser Thor with nine and a half inch guns. Oh, it's a very old design. Definitely one of the older armored cruiser hulls. Yeah, this thing has no place being here. Not in the same area as Europa. They did bring a few more ships than I thought they would. But if only they'd rushed the light cruisers, I would have been in a far different condition. Ooh. <laughs> Oops! Kuban says hello. I think the light cruiser Kuban is actually still around. Not sure. Well, this heavy cruiser might be old, but it's definitely capable of taking a beating. Come on, Thor. There she goes. Alright. So, I guess now we can say we killed Thor. That should be a blow to morale. Um, HE on these ships are okay. The HE on the Europa is very good. At this range, oh, and by the way, um, I've set this, <coughs> these AP and HE armor values, or pen values, to 100% armor quality. So the enemy has 55%, which means that my pen with HE is even better. We're dealing about 7.5 kilometer range, so 4.2 inches. Let's say it's a bit better than that. Um, this thing has paper for armor, so one HE shell should put an end to it. If it is. Let's 
kind of the problem. That was AP from Kuban. Or HE. Yeah, we got these guys in the bag. I wonder how expensive the loss of the battle cruiser is going to be for the Germans. I'm thinking somewhere in the range of about 15 to 20,000 victory points, and then we get some. Let's say some other snacks to go along with that. These guys do have torps. Yeah, we are sitting kind of inside of their torpedo range. Jesus, that's a lot of damage. Wiesbaden, toast. Köln. Torpedo's been destroyed. <coughs> that just leaves the Frauenlob. She's also running on low fuel. And is getting completely hammered by Kuban. Now, this is a fantastic first battle for Kuban. Uh, one, because it's a fairly low risk engagement. And two, because it'll train her crew up. Meaning that Kuban is going to be even more deadly. That is the type of crew engagement, or, well, <laughs> crew training, really, that I would like to see. There we go, 19k. Pretty decent prediction there. I hope the Germans come to their senses. I hope that they don't want to continue this war. I might be able to drag it out a little bit more. Um, I do have a couple of submarines in the Baltic trying to stop a battleship from coming home. But whether the submarine engages or not is a complete dice roll. There we go. Uh, yes, I will accept your peace treaty. It's a complete dice roll and you never quite know what's going to happen. Like over here, I got eight subs. And I th yeah, right there she is. The German battleship just sailed right through. Oh boy. That's a lot of assets. That's a battleship and a battle cruiser in one div, and then another. Okay, um, we're gonna move here. We're gonna <coughs> try and put up a screening force, if you will, in the sense of uh, sink anything that happens to have a German flag on it. All of these guys are set to unrestricted warfare. Hopefully, with that, I'll be able to sink some German shipping. Again, whether it works, I don't know. Um, this is the thing I'm trying to stop. The Germans are trying to walk into Lithuania with three and a half million men. And they have lost very, very, very little. I mean, losing 106,000 men on 3.6 million men? That's uh, it's not a rounding error, but it's not far off. When it comes to the defender, <laughs> me, that's not so good. Now, victory points against the Japanese are looking very nice. Look at that. 146 points scored for the Japanese. 53k for me. And then we have the Austro-Hungarians. Not too much happening here. I do still have a submarine or two here. I'm going to have to bring these guys back. Because they are a little too badly damaged. You're going to go to Tripoli. It's nice there this time of year. Um, as for the rest, the Germans seem to be bringing some ships home. Potentially because they are up to no good. Yeah, they're bringing a lot of ships home. Everybody's going to link up in the Baltic. More battleships. Yay. Uh, this is going to be very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I do have submarines coming out eventually, like in five months. Um, half of them are set to deploy in Riga. But five months. These guys are going to get there a heck of a lot sooner. So it's going to be a very... Oh, there's another battleship. It's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks. Now, a conflict we haven't seen much of yet is the one with the Austro-Hungarians. It's about to change. We're engaging a battleship, a battlecruiser, and a heavy. With two battleships. But they're not really ideal. Apostle Piotr? Yes, she's an ideal ship for the job. 13 inches. She's just trying to find her footing. There she goes. Also with her, Petrov. A battleship slash invasion ship with just a couple of 11 inches. I'm going to do an overhaul of these ships. I want to have these things refit to give me a lot more firepower. Because they have a lot of empty hull space and I can easily, easily use that. Now the Apostle Piotr, um, she's been fired or she's been uh, put into fights many times and she's most of the time come out on top. I mean, she's never quite lost because she's still here. Let's see what the Austro-Hungarians are fielding. But this thing has a weird setup. It has single in or single barrel guns of an 11-inch caliber, 11.2 to be exact, and they almost strike me as being short barrels or shorter barrels. 
which could mean that the ship's not going to be having a whole lot of range. Uh, potentially not a whole lot of accuracy with that. Yeah, 20 clicks. The Apostle is in range, but she's not really doing that hot. Why are you doing 24 knots when I'm telling you to do like half? Well, not half, but like 20 knots. I'm going to get that cruise speed bonus. 5% chance to hit at 20 clicks range is really good. Here is their battle cruiser, which accidentally got hit as she was kind of caught in the firing line. Um, she is sporting a lot of 9 inches. She's sporting 12 dual barrels and then another 3. Um, yeah, the, the side mounts are the 6 and then we got the 3 more dual barrels. So that's 18 9 inches. This thing is going to be the bane of the cruisers. Fortunately, I don't have a whole lot. I just got the light cruiser Griden or Griden. So I'm going to keep the light cruiser very far away from this particular fight and just take the fight to the battleship, the battle cruiser. If I can sink those, I can take these guys out of this fight, um, i.e. the whole Austro-Hungarian faction. And hopefully, at some point, not have to worry about ships here, mothball the whole bunch and hopefully be able to save a good amount of money here because I'm still bleeding a whole lot of money. And I'm going to put that to work on researching more submarines or other smaller strike craft. Now, the Apostle at this range is trying its level best. But I think that this thing took a lot of flooding from that one hit that it took, by the way. Many bulkheads, maybe. Why the heck are you guys running off? That's a little weird. The Petrov, by the way, is not in range. She only has a range of 20 clicks. And seeing as she's lagging behind slightly, also due to her 20 knot speed, she's not really going to be able to take fight or take part in the fight at all. Um, and I think these guys are running off. So, yeah, as much as I would like to do a fight here, I'm going to just retreat. I am going to hopefully give them something to think about with that one pen that I did. Although, flooding doesn't really count. Flooding is damage that just doesn't get taken into account when you're looking at the eventual victory points. Because that only goes for structural damage, which was, well, nothing. So, let's see if I can disengage. As expected, this little skirmish got me a whole five victory points for, I don't know, showing up and landing one hit. It's not exactly going to give me a ton of victory points, and it is not likely to end the war anytime soon. So, let's have a look at the Petrovs. Let's have a look at how I can utilize these hulls better. I do have a bit of a challenge on my hands, which is my shipbuilding capability. I am building a bunch of submarines, which are taking up some capability. More importantly, I'm building a couple of ships for export. And as such, my shipbuilding capability is 109 for 177, and those Petrovs are big. So, uh, the Petrov, last seen in 1911, designed originally for just a lot of tonnage. They currently cost me maintenance 3 million a month, and I expect that to start blossoming to about 8 million to 10 million a month. But, it is a pretty quick way to suddenly burst my firepower um, with a ship, well, basically with a hull that I've had for a long time. I just barely used it. I just used it as tonnage when I'm trying to do a naval invasion. So, um, these things were designed to be cheap and fast, well, i.e. fast to build. Uh, we're going to change that. Displacement jumps from 23 to 20. Uh, maintenance jumps to 4.7 million. Yeah. Let's put this thing to about 24 knots. Um, let's make sure she has an auxiliary engine, because she's now considered a combat craft. Let's give her... Uh, let's basically turn her into a full-blown battleship. Better Citadel, uh, some better propeller shaft, better steering. There she goes, maintenance 6.3 million, that's without firepower. Coincidence rangefinder is fine, although, no oh, stereoscopic could work. What kind of tower we got? 22 long range accuracy. This is the, this is the tower. Reinforced main tower too. Okay, so that's the tower I have. Uh, I can remove it, but I don't really see a need to go with this one. Uh, this has 21 long range accuracy, this is 22, so this is slightly better. Secondary tower, no upgrades there, I believe. This is rear tower 4. I mean, the tech 
<laughs> hasn't really changed much in the last couple of years. Okay, let's go with induced boilers to get the engine efficiency up. And then firepower. We have access to the 14-inch Mark 1. So I'll definitely not be using that. I'll definitely be using the 13-inchers. Because they, so far, have proven to be extremely reliable. Solid firepower, um, both against smaller surface combatants as well as bigger ones. And it's exactly that versatility that I need with these ships. Uh, there you go. Maintenance, 7.8 million a month. Pitch is enormous. This has to do with their high draft. Um, I feel... Yeah. That's a bit of a problem. Let's put the draft back to low. The beam is fine. And if I can up the deck armor, that should make it a bit better. Because you're putting more weight on the core of the ship. Let's put it to 2-inch superstructure. Uh, we do have casemates. 8-inch mark 2, 2, 2, 3. Alright, we're going to supersize these casemates. <coughs> You're now 5.9 inch. Oh, sorry, that's the dual barrels. You're now 5.9 inch. Oh. Or not. 10% longer barrels, giving these things a pretty, pretty decent draft, I suspect. Yeah, 14 clicks. Excellent. Acoustics. Let's give you a hydrosonic system, or a hydrophone system. This way we can at least spot some torpedoes. Uh, or at least pretend. You're now also going to be a command ship. And when it comes to propellant, we're currently using TNT because it is fairly stable. 17% flash fire, 26% or 29. I'll take 17. Cordite is going to make it a lot more volatile, so I'll not do that. We're using soft, no, cap ballistic HE and capped AP shells for dealing with high armor threats. And with this firepower, I should be able to pin light cruisers with ease with HE. Refit time, eight months. I'm going to have to refit these things like one by one by one. Uh, not only to save on my shipyard capacity, but also to make sure that uh, I don't take too many of these out of operation for an extended period of time. All right, let's see if we can condense this thing. Make the... Um, Make the citadel a little smaller. If these things can be 360 degree turrets, that would be fantastic. And I think they are. Now, I am colorblind, so it's a bit harder for me to see, which is why you'll see me just move the turrets around with R and T. Which is the rotating thing for the turret. Yeah, so that ought to work. Put this over there. Perfect. Like so. No, you're fine where you are. I just need to rotate the turret. This one. There. We still got a four weight offset, which is pretty severe. Um, Tonnage-wise, I don't have a lot of options. I could try putting a secondary gun, like maybe next to here. Shift the weight aft. Uh, it's not really doing that much for me. I could also remove a couple of these casemates here. And I guess that's going to balance the ship out. Yeah, there we go. Pitch, still not great. But it's something I can live with. Let's put a bit more armor on uh, the main belt. Because that also increases your center of mass and as such reduces your pitch. Okay, we got uh, like 12 tons left. I think this is fine as is. 11-3. Welcome to the Petrov Mark II. No longer just an invasion ship. Uh, we're going from a 3 million maintenance price to 8.3 million a month, but all of a sudden we're going from 4 11-inchers and uh, a random 5-incher to 8 13-inch guns with very heavy shells. These things are going to have a ton of firepower and are basically going to supersede the Europas because the Europas have 6 13 inches. These things have eight, plus a lot of casemates. So all we need now is a couple of months to get these things refit. Thankfully, about a month later, the Germans come to their senses. Peace is once again signed. So, um, 
that is going to give me naval prestige and removes unrest. My naval prestige is currently a little under 1600. Unrest is zero. Um, as for provinces, do I want anything from these guys? Of course, I should have potentially invaded Bismarck, um, the Caroline Islands, German New Guinea, stuff like that. Would have been nice, unfortunately didn't, because I was a bit busy keeping the Japanese off of me. So uh, yeah, I'll take Madeira. Why not? A little bit of influence or a little bit of extra income is not going to hurt anybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> Remind me how Spain is uh, maneuvering against me. I'd love to see that. Now, we're going to have a 1v1. Svetoy Yakov versus the battleship Andriyu. The Yakov was trying to make its way back. Um, she had been engaged in anti-Japanese warship activity. Unfortunately, expending almost all of her ammunition in the process. So, she's going to be a little light on firepower. I'm not sure if she made it back to port yet. Or if she's kind of getting intercepted on her way there. No, she's fine. She has her standard complement. She's screwed by veterans. And she has 100% fuel. She's ready for this fight. Can the Japanese say the same? Let's see. They do have a torpedo boat escort. Um, the torpedo boats, I think, are largely outdated by 1909. To the sense that you can't build them anymore, depending on what tech you have. <clears throat> I think at some point, destroyer hulls just make the, uh, the torpedo boats completely outdated. And as such, most nations are, well, getting rid of their torpedo boats. Or in the case of the Japanese, I am working to get rid of their Japanese torpedo boats for them. This thing almost looks German. Interesting that they're not using a barbette for the B turret. That seems like a mistake. Their firepower is definitely more numerous with their 10-12 uh, their inches. I hope that the Yakov, with her slightly bigger guns in the form of the 13s, is going to be able to pen this thing from range. And that if the Yakov takes a hit, she's going to be able to do better damage control due to her veteran and damage control parties. Maintain armor piercing shells. Unless we're getting some sort of plunging fire, but I kind of doubt that. Still haven't found the range. Ten clicks. Come on, dude. Sure enough, we should be able to hit it right about now. There we go. 12% chance to hit. There's the torpedo boat. Put the secondaries on that. Don't switch to the new target. Thank you very kindly. Just use the secondaries. Chance to pen me with those 12s is pretty damn good. Okay, we're going to have to angle the ship a bit. Angle away from the torpedo boat, angle away from the battleship. Make yourself a bladed target, and hopefully we're going to see those pen values plummet. There you go. Pen chance going down. 25%, 23 the whole belt's now angled. Perfect. Uh, they apparently cannot say the same, and are taking severe damage and flooding. Torpedo boat over here. Oh, ain't you a cute little thing? Two torpedo tubes right on the stern. This thing just took a hit from... Took, wow, took two hits from an 8-inch. It seemed like it just shrugged it off. The battleship just seemingly took another big hit. The Yakov currently just fine. She's... Uh, <laughs> she's been through worse, I think. She's faced more foes, at least at the same time. More flooding on the Japanese battleship, the Anryu, that's a $193 million warship. Mine's 227. Slightly more expensive. Anryu has a trained crew. I don't think that's quite going to save her, especially considering she has cramped crew quarters. That's not only fewer men that can do damage control, but also men that don't have the same experience as my guys do. So I think we're going to see this thing flood. I first need to get rid of this torpedo boat. Off you go. There you go. Perfect. Next, Unryu. I don't want this thing anywhere near me. I do want to maintain an angle. Because I didn't like that 25 to 28% chance to pen. Here we go. 16% chance to pen me. And there's the flooding. Right on schedule. Their damage control party is already struggling. On top of that, their reload's going to suffer. 
They're now suffering a 75 second reload. They're using the Mark II. My guns only have a 45 second reload. And that is a combination of better crew and a higher tier gun. I'm surprised that these ships still use these older guns. I thought the Japanese would definitely have had access to the Mark III. So either it's an older ship, or they didn't get around to refitting it, or they really don't have the tech yet. There's quite a few different explanations for this one. Boom. Engine damaged, flooding, fire. 23.6% of the crew is gone. You're going to be suffering from severe damage and stability at this point. You got 10% chance to hit me, and I have 70% chance to let my shots. And it is adding up. What's your armor value? Four deck superstructure. Let's go for an HE burst. Because I want to see if I can HE this thing, to the superstructure, to death. I might be able to get a whole bunch of damage here. <laughs> or none at all. <laughs> Depending exactly on what part you hit. Because against the main belt, the four belt, and the aft belt, this will do absolutely nothing. Well, maybe against the four belt. These ranges, like seven clicks. Yeah. Ow. Oh, we destroyed another main gun? No, we still destroyed the same main gun. Okay, one more chance with HE, and then I'm going to switch back to armor piercing. I want to see a high damage value, like 2k. Yeah, we're not getting it. Alright, <clears throat> back to armor piercing. 28% of the crew is gone. She's burning badly. The Yakov is taking some hits, but... Well, 7% structural integrity loss for the destruction of a Japanese battleship is a trade I will make any day. That, however, was uncalled for. That was not part of the plan. Ooh, there's the damage. Flash fire. Flash fire, flash fire. And she rolls over to starboard. That's where buoyancy falls. There she goes. Didn't take the Yakov long. And she can chalk up yet another kill. Excellent work. Another 11,000 victory points versus 129. So they got almost nothing for the damage that they did to the Yakov. This is again the importance of structural integrity damage versus flooding. If you flood, you can have a ship like 80% flooded. And it just doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, victory points. If it would have been 80% structural integrity loss, and this is hypothetical, this is not what happened to the Yakov, but that would have been a heck of a lot worse. There she goes. Um, as for the rest, they're losing transports. France is losing transports. Britain is losing transports. The Austro-Hungarians are losing transports in the Caribbean. Really? Laos has been conquered. We have a battle going on here. Oh, this is not a fight I really want. Comrade Kat, the Navaya Nadecha, Nadechda, and the Admiral Grig against the Yakagi. Not the aircraft carrier by any means. It's a, a battle cruiser with 11 inch guns. I'll take the fight, but I don't want this one. All right, here we go. The ships that I have available are armed with the 9-inchers. This is the uh, <laughs> the Derp class. We also have the Comrade Cat. Still armed with her 9-inch guns. Still very dangerous, especially as she's crewed by veterans. So pretty accurate, or at least should be. And then we have the Admiral Grig. Ideally, this would have been a torpedo cruiser. Unfortunately, it is not. It's a 7-inch gun cruiser. Does not come with a single torpedo launcher. Now, I'm seeing that the enemy battlecruiser has fuel issues. Low fuel does mean that the ship's going to be far less maneuverable and as such potentially way easier to hit. Let's slow the ship down. So, if I want to rush this thing, I better have torpedoes. Unfortunately, I don't have torpedoes on a single ship. Nice. So yeah, we're going to have to just HE this thing to death. Um, that means going for either extensive fires... Or just uh, of complete crew loss. I think pretty much those are the options. Anybody else has any ideas, by all means let me know down below in the comments. Although by that point, I think it will not really impact the battle at all. Well, and of course, I mean, there are always other options. I could rush this thing and I could just ram it. 
but I really don't find that that's a good use of your ships because ramming damage is pretty unpredictable. Ramming damage also, um, of course, causes a whole lot of damage to your own vessel. And, well, like having a very heavily armored cruiser ram a lightly armored battle cruiser still results, I think, more damage to your heavy cruiser. It's not like you can make a ramming ship with a, an extremely armored bow and hope for the best. Fortunately, that's not how the game works. This is not the era of triremes <laughs> and those very, very pointy, I'm gonna ram you bows. This is all about gunpower. Identification complete. Half a percent of crew losses. Spacious quarters. Burning the crew down is gonna be pretty difficult. Superstructure three and a half inch, four belt two and a half, aft belt two and a half. Um, I can pen that, but I'm going to have to get fairly close. Everybody, fire armor piercing and just see what happens. Because I think if we hit, we're going to just ricochet off the ship. Yeah, partial pen. That's the, <coughs> the key point, if we hit. It does seem like the Akagi is not interested in taking this fight. Perhaps because she's running away. Low fuel. What's your speed? 18 knots. At least I can dictate the range of the engagement. I'm not even landing hits here. Oh. Wow. Flooding? What? Did we go through the deck? Through the aft belt? Okay. I guess it was the rudder compartment that got hit. But it just didn't really seem to register. Alright, let's see if we can just disengage. This fight's gonna take me all the ammunition that I need for taking down other threats that might involve, for example, escorts uh, for the Akagi in a future fight as I'm using the Yakov. So I think I'd be much better served keeping your ships alive and healthy. Getting, like, I don't know, 100 victory points, if that. And just letting this battlecruiser slip away. Because my chances of taking it out without taking severe damage in the process is not good. The, just the risk-reward isn't quite there. So we're going to smoke up with the Grig. We're going to disengage. And we'll live to fight another day. Successfully disengaged. 20 victory points for my trouble. I hope to find that battle cruiser another time, but with the Yakov, because the Yakov would eat that thing for breakfast. Another battle cruiser down would push me closer towards the 100,000 victory points, which is kind of what I'm chasing with the Japanese fight, because at that point I might be able to take one of their very sizable colonies, and that would give me the income that I need, because income is something, well, I never have quite enough of. Anyway, that'll be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for the next.